it's only the construct self that has a need for money or anything money can buy. Okay. That's what you're saying. The construct is a construct in lack. I mean, mm -hmm. to deny your selfhood as the Christ and to accept a false self that's been made up, that's make believe and fictitious, then that that is to accept the belief in lack. And from within the construct, if I believe I'm a person, then I'm lacking. I mean, just the simple lacks of I, I'm I'm lacking warmth. I need to put a a coat on. I'm I'm la lacking coolness. I need to take some clothes off because I'll burn up. I'm lacking food. I'm lacking sex. I'm lacking, you know, water or something to quench my thirst. I'm lacking love. Mm -hmm. I need people to stroke me and touch me and love me. You know. Affirm me. Validate yes. me. Yes. Encourage me. Support me. I'm lacking prestige or position or respect. I I need I need and want that. I want I want I need awards or I need things that give me recognition. So you're saying all like that, that, every one of those things is just part of the construct. It's not real. It's, all it's just made up. part of the construct. Mm -hmm. And money, of course, finance is ties into to that. I mean, um, money is tied in with in the world with prestige and status, with freedom of the body. I can have money, then I can travel. I, mm -hmm. the small I, can the body can move around in this fictional world and um, go where it wants to go, do what it wants to do. You know, enjoy the finer things in life. Yes fine dining and find this and find that. It's a menu of ways that the construct has contrived to um, have the good life, in, in quotes, of what it would call um, the menu of the pleasures and the, the great things of, of the world. And it's a big deception because guilt, the guilt of believing in such a construct is concealed in the mind. Minds kind of run into the form and, and actually is uh, seems to be having an experience, even though it's a hallucination of an experience, that things are working well in this world. Things are, are coming out very well. So the guilt is, is hidden, and at the same time it's held in place. It's mm -hmm. perpetuated in the mind, as it were. It doesn't go away. Even the system where it seems like, gee, I'm a person, I'm starting to get all the good things in life, I find dining and I comfort of the body and I have a sense of respect from my peers and community and everything. Security. Security. Stability. There's still these doggone things like sickness and, uh, and um, some of these moody periods I have where I just feel all alone and, and the break in to this nice, dream world of uh, an illusion of happiness and satisfaction that I've made up. It's just broken into by these periods. In some cases, it, you know, it seems the other way. It seems, if, you know, if I seem to have a, this big alcoholic addiction or this, this great scarcity that I'm constantly fighting to, uh, to make ends meet, to, to pay the bills, to, to survive, my li poor living conditions, you know, so forth, the poverty end of the world. You know, it's the same, in a sense, that instead of being run from and the, the lack and the scarcity being handled by by more um, stuff, stuff that, that seem to pr provide a, an illusion of security, then the scarcity and the lack is, is experienced on the other extreme as being very real again. And it still comes from the mind's belief in the construct, you know, that that this is more of a direct overt thing that that the world then is is constructed in such a way that it's witnessing to my belief in lack, my belief in unworthiness. I'm stupid, I'm uneducated, I don't have enough food to eat, I don't have proper medical care, and so on and so forth. But this is just an, another end, another extreme of the construct, which still is made to witness to, to the lack. So it seems like it, it's always either witnessing to the lack 
or it's covering over the sense of lack or belief in lack, one or the other. Right. Filling in the hole with something in the world, solving the problem with an external means. Except if I, if I perceive myself as poor and deprived, how does that fill in the hole? I mean, I can see it if I, if I perceive myself as wealthy and able to have everything I want. But at the other extreme that you were just, just describing, how, how does the mind see that that's filling in the hole? Well, it's not, in that case, it's not so much filling in the hole, but it's, um, there still is a wish, in many cases, I wish I had all that stuff you know, in, in my mind to, to fill in the hole. That's like, oh, okay. for instance, um... It's a belief that all that stuff yeah, the stuff can fill in the hole right. is what's... A lot of times with lottery tickets and everything, you know, the people in this world, so-called, you know, low income, just line up hoping for that big score. Mm -hmm. And the belief is still in there. There's still a belief that something outside myself can fill me up. And, um... Mm -hmm. Okay. I, that's how they're really the same. Yeah. It's because the belief behind each manifestation is the same, is that wealth and power and all that is what will make a difference. It's what will fill up the void, the yeah. emptiness that I feel. Yeah. And, I mean, we aren't going to make that generalization that, that that's completely for everyone. I mean, there are those who just have a disdain for wealth and possessions. I mean, we could, we could get into mm. the aesthetic realm, where it's, there's the thing of, um, I'm still a person, you see. I still believe I'm a person in this realm, but, but it's seen that I will, um, the less possessions I have as a person, the more I deny um, my, my body things. I deny it food or, for instance, fasting, or I deny it um, comfort and luxuries and so on and so forth. Um, but somehow that will will mitigate the punishment that I still deserve. Or like I'll will, do it to myself first and risk. God will back off. Yeah, that's one thing. Or just this sense of, um, it, it really is still the level confusion. It's like I... And the belief that I'm still a person, the belief in the subject-object split is still held on to. But now it's, instead of it being valuable and favorable to collect as many things and possessions and, and associate um, as a person with these things, now it's a, there's a dissociation, but I'm trying to dissociate as a person from the world. I'm trying to step out of the world trying to escape from the world, but I still believe I'm a person in the world. Mm. So I go to the mountain. So I go to the convent, to the monastery. So I don't associate with people. You see, people. Because I'm a, the mind believes I'm a person, and I'm going to just get away from, from other, other people. Persons. Or other mm -hmm. objects. I'm just mm -hmm. not going to do this and that. And of course, there's, there's still the belief in personhood, and that hasn't been questioned. So, so we're still, the mind is still um, made up a construct, this time of poverty, <laughs> poverty in the material sense, and that, that seems to be um, the way to go. That seems to be the most valuable. And it's more valuable to be poor and to not have, ob for a person to have objects than it is for a person to have objects, you know. And once again, that's just a different construct. Mm -hmm. That's not the escaped from the, the construct that I made this whole thing up. It's still not stepping back and seeing that it's just a construct, right. is what you're saying. Right. It's just a different one. Yes. It's still saying that there are certain forms are evil in the world, and I'm going to avoid those evil, uh, rich forms, and I'm going to pick a poor form that's better mm -hmm. than the rich form. You know, in a sense, the old stuff about Jesus, the, the, the line could be used, well, Jesus was a beggar. And therefore, you know, I'll just take on the form of a beggar, and magically, I'll be a healed person. But, but personhood mm -hmm. has to be questioned, has to be stepped back from. 
So is there any construct that's any more valuable or more helpful than any other construct? Yes, there, there is one construct that, that is more valuable, and, and that's forgiveness. Um, that's the construct that, that I was talking about earlier, that um, when you step back, step back, step back, step back, well, you can see, the con see it as a construct. As a construct. That is a, it's still a construct, but it's like forgive, forgiveness has been described in the Course as like this blanket that just covers everything. I mean, in a sense, you step back so far that you've got this purpose in your mind, this purpose of, of healing, of wholeness, of not ordering and not judging and not valuing and arranging among the, the thought forms anymore. And then you have like a blanket that literally covers the thought forms in, in one metaphor, or the, it's seen as a fabric I've talked about before, that, that there's no hierarchy among the thought forms. There's no meaning read into them, no association. Forgiveness is a meaning in the mind that is given to everything in form. And obviously it's still as a construct in the sense that it's perceptual. But it's the one helpful um, construct. It's the all-inclusive construct where, where uh, there's no ordering among the, the thought forms. What about other constructs? I mean, doesn't the Course say something about um, changing concepts as you go along, mm -hmm. and that, you know, as you change the concept that you're holding on to at that time will be more expansive than the, the one that you let go of, yes. until you finally get to the point where you let go of all of that. But in that sense, isn't the construct that keeps getting broader and broader, isn't that more helpful than yeah. the one that you left? Yeah, that, in, in a sense, that's the only value that can be put on a, on a, on a construct or form of any kind is, um, is what is it for? Mm -hmm. um, you know, you could, you could talk about in a religious sense of, uh, of uh, a heaven and a hell and... Um, so on and so forth, and then we could throw in the idea of something like a reincarnation perspective of a soul that uh, is immortal but keeps going through, um, keeps returning again and returning again to the world, learning lessons until uh, it finally has, has uh, remembered its selfhood and, and seen past the veil of the, the maya or the illusion. Um, that can be a helpful construct, for instance, reincarnation could, if it, if it gives a sense of, of the eternal, of mm -hmm. something that's beyond the temporal world. But, obviously, it's still a construct in the sense that it involves the belief in birth and the belief in death. And the death of birth of what? The body. Still involves the body. Still involves time. Like, you know, we could call them lifetimes or whatever, so there's a linear sense to it. And it's obvious that, that all of this is still part of the construct of, uh, of the world, because mm -hmm. it involves all these temporal things, time, space, birth, death, body. So, well, it's even, helpful. Well, even, I mean, you could talk about it in terms of different lifetimes, but even within what is called lifetime, a lifetime, doesn't the mind keep... Um, you know, expanding, well, I guess it depends, but at least, you know, our purpose in undoing and unlearning and examining and looking at things is, is so that the, you can see the, the construct and step back from it and it just seems like the, con the construct in the mind keeps changing. Mm -hmm keeps loosening up, as it were, keeps letting go of more and more that it once thought that it was. Like the Until wheels find, we were talking yeah, about like earlier, the you were talking where you about. step back. Right. Each of those, though the mind seems to be on a, still on a wheel, it can see the smaller wheels within it. Mm -hmm. and that it's already stepped off of, in yes, a sense. Right. But knowing that it's, it's still on a wheel, it's just maybe a, 